Today in the news, we got Intel with some new tech, a small correction, and Huawei's latest hit. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. A few weeks ago after their interconnect day, we talked about Intel's plans to implement a new interconnect that would be a sort of stopgap between PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 6. It's called CXL and it allows for lower overall latency and speed equivalent to PCIe Gen 5. This specific interconnect seemed to be aimed at server products, although it could still be used as an interconnect for any systems similar to the Infinity Fabric from AMD or to a lesser extent NVLink from Nvidia. Well now, a new leak coming from Huawei of all companies shows that Intel might just implement PCIe Gen 5 on their servers and they're going to do it very soon. Looking at the Russian roadmap, we see the Intel Xeon SP timeline with the Sapphire Rapids architecture planned for 2021. Their architecture will not only have support for PCIe Gen 5, but also DDR5 memory. So what does that mean for us the gamers or just the all around computer enthusiasts? Well, if DDR5 is making its way into servers for 2021, then we should expect it to trickle down to PCs around 2022 at the latest. That's not too surprising though. DDR3 was introduced around 2007 and it was followed up by DDR4 seven years later in 2014. Add another seven years to that and well we got 2021 which makes sense for DDR5. The more interesting part in my opinion is Intel's complete skip of PCIe Gen 4. We've heard it before that PCIe Gen 4 would be short-lived and that there was a chance that Intel would skip it altogether. This seems to be a confirmation of that. Since Intel is going to be stuck at their current 14 nanometer core architecture for PCs until at least 2022, it kind of makes sense for the company not to jump into the new PCIe territory until their new architecture is figured out. Not that it's impossible, I mean, we're going to see PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 coexist with the same CPUs. It just might be impractical. By then, Intel will be at either 10 or 7 nanometers. Fingers crossed, we have no clue yet. On the other end, in 2022, AMD will probably be closer to Zen 4 or 5, with at least PCIe Gen 4 in their back pocket. Moving on, I want to touch on yesterday's AMD Navi subject real quick. A lot of you guys have pointed out that the dollar amount of the Navi GPUs was in Singaporean dollars, but the original source translated by one of our viewers and the first article in English on the subject both showed price in US dollars. One of the possibilities is that the pricing is for the toxic model of cards. Toxic cards from Sapphire are some of the higher overclocking end ones and they haven't been released since the R9 series back in 2016. I do believe that there is a chance that those prices are in fact in Singaporean dollars since it would align better with the leaks, but all evidence point to it being in USD right now. Next up, it looks like Huawei is in even more trouble than it already was. To sum up what has been happening in the last few days as simply as possible, on May 15th, Huawei was placed on the US Department of Commerce entity list. This basically forces US companies to stop dealing with Huawei, whether it be for software, hardware, or services. This means that companies like Google can no longer support or deliver Android for Huawei products, Intel can no longer supply Huawei with chips for computers, and Microsoft could no longer supply windows and so on and so on. Does that mean Huawei was doomed? Not necessarily, but it was already a huge hit. On the smartphone front, Huawei has been working on its own OS called Hongmeng OS, and they don't have to worry about Qualcomm for their chips since they've been designing their chips with ARM for years now with the Kirin processors. But now in most recent news, the US ban is now causing international companies to stop dealing with Huawei. According to a report from the BBC, ARM, the UK-based chip designer for pretty much all of Huawei's chips, has told their employees that this US ban means it can no longer work with Huawei since some of the technologies employed are from US origin. This was done via a memo at ARM that instructed employees to, and I quote, end all active contracts, support entitlements, and any pending engagements with the company. It goes even further than that. If an ARM employee sees a Huawei employee at a trade show or other events, the employee must politely decline and stop any further 
other conversations about ARM's business. Now that, that is a pretty big blow to Huawei's business since it could probably have survived in China without Google, but not without its hardware. Personally, I would like to dive deeper into the whole Huawei issue, but I'm waiting to see what is going to happen later on. Right now, Huawei is in the same situation as ZTE was about a year ago, although Huawei said that they wouldn't take the same path as ZTE. This is where things will become really interesting. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you've got any questions, the comment section is there as usual. You can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one.